Hey guys, Dan here, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can create rain in Photoshop just using the Photoshop tools, um, no outside, uh, you know, resources. Um, so we're just going to create a 1080p background here. I just have a preset. Uh, we're going to unlock the background, double clicking on it, and then we're going to create. Uh, we're going to make this black first, so we're just going to hit Control I just to invert the uh, background color to black. Now we're going to create a new layer. And then we're going to fill this with whatever color, um, but make sure um, these two are set to black and white, your foreground and background, for the first step, which is to create fibers. And we go to filter, uh, render fibers, and once we get this, uh, you're probably going to want to go with uh, strength all the way up. I recommend strength all the way up. And then uh, variance, you probably want at least over like 20. And then this kind of depends on how much and how thick you want your rain to be. Uh, so this is entirely up to you at this point. But um, for for the uh, demo, um, I'm just going to go 6464 because uh, I know this works. Um, I haven't tried any like really low ones, um, but obviously if this is something you want to do. You can go try that, see if it gives you your desired effect. But yeah, we're going to hit OK and we're going to get this crazy effect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to Image Adjustments Levels. And we're going to drag this uh, this left hand triangle all the way to the end. And then we're going to hit OK, and then it just kind of takes more white away. Um, so now we're kind of left with this is the base we need to start with. You could probably start off with just rendering some noise out. So another way you could probably start this is uh, so if we add a new layer, make sure it's just filled with black this time, um, and then you just add noise, and then you probably just bump that up to like. 25 and you'd obviously want monochromatic on so you don't get all the weird colors and you could probably start off with that um, if you then went to levels and did, did the same thing uh, as brightness and contrast so if you just kind of and you probably have to bump the whites up a little bit using the other sliders so you kind of get the same effect but the one I, the reason why I like this more is because um, these shapes are a little bit different, there's way more variation, all the noise is always dots everywhere, that's what noise is, um, so you, when you start doing the next uh, effect which is kind of to motion blur it, so you get kind of that rainy look, um, it just doesn't look as, um, there's not as much variation in the like shapes and sizes of the rain, so I guess this just gives you a more realistic rain effect even though this kind of effect that we're doing here isn't super realistic um, I've tried putting it on like real life images and you can kind of tell it's been placed there uh, but with you know multiple layers of this and you know just you know kind of actually understanding what rain would look like um, you could probably get the effect to work um, at least trick the mind because obviously it's fake you just gotta need, need it to look realistic um, to a certain degree degree and then people will think it's real if they don't actually know um, but our next stage is to motion blur it so we're going to go to blur motion blur and this is kind of how you decide how much and what angle you want the rain to be at so you don't want to go away too much otherwise you'll just get lines um, you probably just want to blur it by like 25 and I'm just going to make this like 65 so you kind of get that kind of angle usually rain's coming in at a slight angle because of wind and whatnot so I guess that kind of adds a realistic touch to it so we hit okay don't worry about the edges yet you can scale this up and get rid of them at the end so we're going to go back to levels now and we're just going to remove a lot of the black and at this point you could probably keep that that would look nice um, so I'm going to make two instances of this so I'm just going to get rid of one and then I'm going to go to levels I'm just going to literally drag this in to where I think it looks cool I like that, so I'm just going to drag and scale that so you get rid of the weird edges that motion blur does. So you kind of got that effect, and then we're going to go a step further with the other one. And we're going to take this a step further. We're going to bump up the whites as well so we can do this one more time. So we're going to hit Ctrl F to apply our filter again. Actually, no, we're not going to go back, Ctrl Z. We're going to go in there, motion blur, and we're actually going to change it to like a 75 blur. So we're going to get a really long rain, like it's coming down faster. Now we're going to go back into our levels and we're just going to drag this one in a little bit 
if we jab one up to give it a little bit more probably not that one actually probably this one this will bump the whites up as you can see so we're just going to bump that up a little bit and then we've got something like that and then we obviously scale this so we get rid of the uh, thing so we've got left with that and that um, if we set these both to screen which means they'll both you both see them at the same time that could work a bit more realistic there's some variation in there the small ones as there's longer ones, um, but I think this one looks more realistic. While this one would probably look better on just like a random abstract background, um, you could just put that on. But let me just get this image here and show you what these kind of look like to kind of give you an, an example of <clears throat> what they look like in like a real life image because it's not really a super realistic rain effect, it's just kind of more of a I wouldn't say a fake, well it is a fake one obviously, but I mean it's like more of like a kind of just a, a texture you kind of create in here, not kind of, you're not like, because that's what I'd use them for, kind of like texture ideas. So this is the first one I think looks more realistic, so you can kind of tell that kind of fits the image a lot. Um, <clears throat> and this image is really good because people have all their umbrellas out and stuff. The only thing this effect is missing is depth. Now that rain does look like it kind of fits the image, but it doesn't look like it's covering the whole image. I don't know if anyone else can see that, and I don't know if it shows up really. You probably have to put this 1080p full screen, but you can kind of see like the rain right in front of the camera, and you think, oh yeah, that looks, you know, realistic enough. Um, but to me, it just looks looks like what it is. Um, that might be because obviously I've been make I've made the layers and that. So my brain's kind of already, you know, divided the two. So it's kind of hard to make this blend in my eyes. So if I showed this to someone else, you might get different results. So if I was just ask a member of my family, like, did I add the rain or is that already in the image? You know, I'd probably be quite surprised at the images. But then, and the images are the results. And then this one, this is the more like real fakey one that doesn't really fit in. It does to a degree, but I think the other one looks way realistic. Can you put both of them in? Yeah, it works, but I think it works better with just the first one. So, uh, yeah, and what I was on about with this being like a uh, like a texture layer. So, say if you had a background of like a, a dark blue or something, and then we create two new layers. We're gonna have one brush. What we're gonna do here is we're just gonna create a uh, like a something like that and we set it to overlay we're just going to create like a really nice something like that just going to merge them together dupe set that to like multiply or screen probably multiple screen look really nice and then if we set this so you kind of like a screen if you just drop that down a little bit, kind of adds a cool texture, don't you think? Is it just me? Something like that. And then also you can keep building. And then you could probably chuck, I mean, chuck in a, a chuck in some clouds or something at like fifteen. See, and you can kind of build up layers and layers and just get this cool texture going but yeah um hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial um i'll be sure to try and make some more tutorials um it's been a month since i last made a video uh, time has gone super quick uh, i don't know where the hell it's gone um and that whole time i was trying to think of a video um but yeah hope you guys enjoyed it if you liked it and it helped you please give the prompt uh, the video a like and obviously if you didn't like it and it didn't help you you can dislike it um if you have any comments or feedback or tutorial ideas, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next tutorial, which will hopefully be within at least the week. Um, that's, that's my plan, and it has been since the start to at least do one video a week, rather if that be tutorials, speed arts. Um, I have an idea to be doing like a live commentary design while I teach type thing. I don't know what to call it yet. I don't know what to do, but I'll basically be setting a project for myself. And then I'll just be like recording it live and telling you what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, what I'm thinking. So it's kind of like a live stream, but just be like, you'd be watching it once it's uploaded to YouTube, a bit different, but 
yeah, you, you get the idea, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to shut up now. And yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next tutorial. Peace.